I hope you got up and got some exercise for your body and enjoyed doing that. Are you eating lunch? Yeah, you might be. What are you having today? Really? What's your favorite? You know what, boys and girls? This coming Sunday is a very important day. Who knows what it is? Do you know? It's Mother's Day. It's a day set aside when we can say, thank you, mom. And we can praise our moms and say, yay. Tell them that you love them. Do you have anything planned? Are you maybe gonna buy mom some flowers? Or go outside and pick some from your garden? Uh, maybe dad's helping you and you can do something very special like make a card for mom or maybe even have dad take you on a walk and let mom have a time to take a nap or do something just for herself. Well, I hope you're remembering. Children need to remember Mother's Day. It's a very important time. So I hope that you're remembering Mother's Day on this Sunday. All right. Now, um, Pastor was having um, the people from our church send in pictures of your mom. So if your mom hasn't sent in pictures, maybe of you and your mom or of her mom, your grandma. Um, let's see if we can get pictures of mom into the church office. That would be great. Just send them to me by email. I pick up the email at First Southern Baptist Church. Um, the email that we have there, the contact is there on um, our webpage, okay? So you look for that and you can send it in. It's fsbcpv at First Southern PV. Dot org. Let's get pictures of you and your mom in here, okay? All right. Well, I wanted to teach you what the word up is for today. Those of you who were in Good News Club, you know that we would have a special word for each time or a little phrase. And today, I want to talk to you about something called a promise. Have you ever made a promise? Like, Yes, mom, I promise I'll clean up my room. <laughs> Have you done that one? Um, or maybe someone's made a promise to you. You know, I, I like to promise kids and I liked to promise my own kids things, but as people, sometimes we can't keep our promises. Maybe you told your best friend that you promised that you were going to go um, to the park with them. And then you woke up on the day you were gonna go to the park and you got sick. And you couldn't go so you broke your promise or maybe mom and dad made a promise to you and then something happened and they ended up not being able to do it sometimes as people we break our promises and that that just happens because we can't control everything but I want to talk to you today about God can we trust God's promises you know when God has made a promise it's God. He cannot lie. He is truth. So, of course, he keeps every single promise that he has. He is perfect. He is all-powerful. He is in control of everything. He is in control of the whole world. So nothing can stop him from doing what he says he will do. And so today we're going to be learning about how we can trust God. He keeps his promises. I'll go down and show you the slide that has that on it. Trust God. He keeps his promises. Okay, are you ready? Can you say it with me? Trust God. Why? He keeps his promises promises. We know that we can trust God because he keeps his promises. That's exciting. Well, today I'm going to teach you a new verse. Last time we were working on our verse that was in Romans 1.16, but today we're going to be learning a brand new verse, and it's in the book of Ephesians. You remember how we can find a book in the Bible? We go to the very front where it says table of contents, and then we look for that book. This um, book is in the New Testament, so it's gonna be in the back part of your Bible. And in my Bible, Ephesians is, is on page 836. Woo, 
That's a lot of pages, isn't it? That's where Ephesians is found. Now, Ephesians is a book that Paul wrote, and he wrote it to a church in a little town called Ephesus. So because they were in Ephesus, they were called Ephesians. And uh, just like if you were in Arizona, you might be called an Arizonan. And so that's how that name of that book got started. Um, uh, and so it's found in Ephesians, and it is in the sixth chapter. So we look for the big number six, and then the verse is 10. So we're going to look for Ephesians, the big number six, the little number 10. That's chapter and verse. That's how they're divided up. Let me ask you this. Who is the strongest person you know? Maybe your dad, or maybe your grandpa? Uh, I don't know. Who is the strongest person you know? You know that strength can be looked at in different ways. I mean, we think of strong as muscles, like the wrestlers or something like that. But strong doesn't always mean that you have muscles. Um, no one is as strong as God, it, are they? No one. God is all powerful. He is strong in a lot of different ways. Our verse today, this new verse, talks about how we can be strong, not like eating our vegetables and making muscles, but we can be strong by doing what's right. And God can give us the strength to do what's right. Remember, we were born with that want to to do wrong inside our hearts. It's not what we naturally would do. So how in the world do we do right when we have that want to to do wrong? Well, we ask Jesus to be our savior from that sinful heart. And remember that sin is anything I think, say, or do that does not please God. It breaks his laws and it makes him sad. That is sin. Like, you think of big things like telling a lie, hating someone, hitting your brother, but do you know that even when you have a wrong thought, that's a sin too? It is. So all of us were born with that sin within us, and we don't really want to do right. Well, the Bible tells us that we can when we've asked Jesus to be our Savior, because God the Holy Spirit comes to live within us. He's the one who would say in our minds, hey, that's not a good idea. And then we can listen, and we can go do what's right, or we can just say, Psst, don't talk to me like that. I don't want to know this is wrong. I'm going to do what I want. And you know what? God's going to let you do what you want. And you can choose to do what you want, but you can't choose the consequences. And sin has a punishment. And remember the Bible says the punishment for sin is separation from God. The Bible also calls it death separated. But when we tell Jesus, we, we believe, we really fully trust that when he was on the cross, he died for my sins. You say it, for your sins. Yes. And when we believe and we say, I want you to be my savior from those, that punishment of sin, then the Holy Spirit comes and lives within you and you're not separated from God anymore. You begin a friendship you begin a friendship with God that starts the moment you believe and it's going to last forever. All right, so we're talking about strong, strong to do right. The first part of this verse, I'm going to put it up on, on your screen. This is a very short verse. I think you'll be able to learn it really easily. Here's the first part. This is again when Paul is talking to the Ephesian people. He's getting toward the end of his whole letter. And he says, finally, be strong in the Lord. Now those who have believed in Jesus as Savior can be strong in the Lord. That means they're living a life that pleases God. It's not your own strength. 
It's God's strength within you. So finally, be strong in the Lord. Now the next part of the verse says, and in the strength of his might. That means it's God's strength. All powerful God, the only one God, the true God, he will give you the power to do what is right. People who believed in Jesus could use God's strength to live that life that pleases him. Now, if you've asked Jesus to be your savior and you're part of his family, you can pray and say, help me to be strong to do what's right. And, oopsie. Finally be strong. Wait a second, wait a second. I didn't want the song yet. <laughs> I marked it wrong on here, I'm sorry. We're gonna sing that song in just a moment. Let me get back to me. Here I am. We're gonna sing that song in just a moment, but I wanna finish telling you that God can be the one who helps you do what's right. So in the song, you start off and you're clapping, and I know you all know how to do that. And then they say, finally, be strong in the Lord. Okay, so it's finally be finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Now, when you get to that part that you say of his might, I want you to pose. Show me your best muscles, er, er, however you think. So in the strength of his might. So for might, you're going to show me your best muscle move, okay? And then it repeats. And when it begins to say the verse, you say Ephesians 6, verse 10. So we're showing the books of the Bible and have where we find the verse, okay? So let's say the verse together. Finally, be strong in the... Lord and in the strength of his might. You do your whatever, okay? Uh, and then at the end, you repeat, be strong, be strong in the Lord. All right, this is a great song. It's fun. I hope you sing it really nice and loud. And remember that this is a great way to learn your memory verse. You'll have this memorized and you can go back and sing it over and over again. I hope you will enjoy, finally be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his mind. show your muscle moves. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. That's your verse, Ephesians 6 verse 10. And so you work on it this week. Let me ask you, if you could go anywhere in the world, where would you go? Shout it out. Disneyland? Oh, I'd like that too. Where? Oh, the world is such a big place, isn't it? There's so many different places to go. And God created that. He created this big place, this big earth that we live on. And he wants everyone, 
everywhere in the whole world to know about him, to know about Jesus, because Jesus is the only one who can make us not separated from God anymore. He is the only way. Wow, going places in the world. Whew. That's what Paul's been doing. Remember, we've been learning about him and looking at him on the maps. Where did we leave him last time? Who remembers? It's where there were statues. Athens. He was in Athens, Greece. That's where he was. That's the name of a country, not like hamburger Greece, okay? <laughs> All right, so traveling around the world, telling people about Jesus, a missionary is who and what Paul was. He wanted to tell as many people as he could about the good news of Jesus and that Jesus could save them from the punishment of their sin. Can you remember some of the other places that Paul went to tell people about Jesus? Do you remember? <gasps> There were quite a few. I hope that you came up with some of them. Let me show you. We're going to show him in Athens again. There he is in Athens. And um, after Paul had been there, now remember he was telling people about Jesus. Some of them listened and believed. Some of them didn't listen at all and they got angry. And some said, I need to wait and talk to you again. So Paul was there staying in Athens for a while. Then he said, I need to go to Rome. Can you say the word Rome? Not like you're roaming around, but like the country of Rome that is in Italy. Now, why would he want to go to Rome? What was so important in this time about Rome? Well, he knew that people were there and that people there needed to know about Jesus. And Rome was the most important city in the entire world at that time. There was a ruler in Rome and he was a ruler over the whole Roman Empire and his name was Caesar. Can you stand up like a king and say, Caesar? Yeah, that's who it was. He was in charge of the most important city in all of the world. And Paul knew it would probably be a dangerous place for him to go and visit, but he decided he would go visit anyway because he knew there were people there that needed to know about Jesus. Um, he knew that God loved him and he knew that God loved the people there so he wanted to tell them and he knew that God the Holy Spirit would protect him when he was there even though it was dangerous now we're going to learn about Paul trying to get to Rome but boy it took a long long time Everywhere Paul went, he told the story about what happened to him. Remember, a bright light shone and he accepted Jesus. Jesus came to Paul and said, why are you fighting with me? And finally, Paul accepted Jesus. Remember his old name? When he was a guy who was bad and he would go around and have um, Christians arrested and even killed? His name was Saul, and he thought he was doing work for God, but really he wasn't, was he? So Jesus got his attention, and Paul came to know Jesus. His name got changed from Saul to Paul. Um, the good news that he wanted to tell is the same good news that I've been telling you today and for the last few weeks. Um, there is a verse in the Bible in Psalms. Psalms is a book in the Old Testament and it's almost right in the middle of your Bible. And in Psalm 118 and verse 1, it tells us that his steadfast love endures forever. God's love continues no matter what. And Paul knew that and he wanted to let other people know about God's love for them and so that's why he was wanting to go. Now, 
there were some people who really didn't want him to be telling this story. They didn't want people to understand that Jesus was the Messiah. He was the son of the one true living God, and he was the only way to go to heaven, to have a relationship with God. Well, Jesus never did anything wrong, did he? He was perfect, but he let some men um, arrest him, beat him up, and he suffered and died on the cross. That's the story, that's the truth that Paul had been going around and telling. The Bible says that Jesus did suffer. In 1 Peter 3 and verse 18, it says that Christ suffered once for sins. He paid the price. He was the perfect one who died for you and for me. But the good news is he didn't stay dead, did he? On the third day, he rose from the dead, didn't he? And then later, about a month later, he went back to heaven. And that's the Jesus that you can have relationship with. Um, Paul wanted, <clears throat> excuse me. My throat is dry. <coughs> Has your throat been dry? It's really been windy, and that, that really makes my throat dry. Well, Paul wanted um, to go to Rome to share the good news, but he hadn't been able to yet. So instead of going to Rome right away, he went back to Jerusalem. Now you remember Jerusalem was the capital of Israel, and it's where a lot of the Christians were. That's kind of where they started. Here's a picture of him. Woo, that was a long way from Athens all the way over to Jerusalem, wasn't it? Do you think they went on land? I think they probably took a boat. Look at how it could go across that water. Well, he went to Jerusalem, but while Paul was there, there were some Jews there who were very angry that Paul was preaching Jesus. And so you know what happened? They had him arrested. Just like when he was Saul, he used to arrest people that were telling about Jesus. Now he was arrested. All he did was tell people about Jesus but they arrested him. He was in the jail, and during the night, the Bible tells us in the book of Acts and chapter 23, that in a dream, Jesus appeared to, to Paul. Here is a picture of what it might have been like, and um, he knew that Paul wanted him to go to Rome, and now he knew God wanted him. Um, when Jesus appeared to him, let me read to you what he said. This is in uh, Acts 23, 11. The Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for as you have testified to the facts about me, that's Jesus talking, in Jerusalem, so must you testify also in Rome. So God wanted him to go to Rome. Jesus wanted him to go to Rome. So Paul knew we can remember what our, our uh, words for today were. We can trust God because he keeps his promises. Do you think that he's going to keep his promise to Paul? Do you think he's going to let Paul get to Rome? Well, let's find out. Not only did Paul want to go, but God wanted him to go there too. And he thought, I want to go and talk to people in Rome. As a matter of fact, I want to talk to Caesar himself. Can you say Caesar again? Caesar! He was the ruler. And he said, I want to go talk to him. Well, here was Paul in the jail. And a month went by. Two months, three, a whole year went by. Paul's still in jail? in Jerusalem, but Jesus told him, I want you to go to Rome, remember? Do you think Paul could have started to doubt? I bet he could have, I would have. But what did we learn? We can, say it with me, trust God, he keeps his promises. Yes, he does. Well, here he was still in this jailhouse. 
and he was waiting. I told you a whole year went by. Guess what? Another year went by. Two years. He was in jail, and he still hadn't gotten to Rome. Could he trust God? Was God going to keep his promise? What do you think? Oh, I think we can trust God because God keeps his promises. That's what we've learned. God had not forgotten his promise to Paul. And finally, Paul set sail for Rome. Now, remember I showed you the picture? Let's go back and look at that um, of when he was in Jerusalem. Rome, do you see it? It is way across the sea. Can you find it? Maybe you can point to it. It's way on the left side of your screen. And that funny looking um, land that kind of looks like a boot, that's Italy. Rome was the capital of Italy. Look how far he was gonna have to go even farther than when he was in Athens right? It's a long time. And they were going to go on a ship, a ship that would be sailing. So if a ship is sailing, they have to put up that big piece of cloth. That's its sail. And, and that's how they would catch the wind and it would help the, the uh, ship to go. But it was almost winter time. Uh oh, that is not a good time to be sailing. Paul knew enough about sailing and about the weather that he knew this was not a good time to go out in the oceans. It was not a good time to cross over in a sea to use a sailing ship. Oh, he thought, you know what? There's lots of storms in the winter time. This could be a very dangerous journey. But God told me I'm going to get to um, uh, Rome safely so he could trust his promise, right? But it's been a long time. Paul let people know um, that it was a bad idea. This is not the right time. There was a centurion. Can you say that? It's kind of hard. Stand up like a soldier and say, centurion, centurion. Yeah, he was the soldier who was in charge of all the prisoners. Paul wasn't the only prisoner, and there were others that were going to go on this boat. He told the centurion, um, I don't think we should do this. This is a bad time for us to be sailing. It could be very dangerous. And in Acts 27, this is what, um, this is what Paul said to them. Uh, Paul said, Sirs, I perceive that the voyage will be with injury and much loss, not only of our cargo and the ship, but also of our lives. This is not a smart thing to do. Now, do you think that this soldier, this centurion who was in charge of all the prisoners, do you think he listened to Paul? If you think he listened to Paul, I want you to put your finger on your nose. If you think the centurion did not listen to Paul, put your hand on your head. All right, you ready? Is that going to be nose or head? Did the centurion listen to Paul? He did not. If you had your hand on your head, you're right. He thought, you're a prisoner, Paul. What do you know? I'm in charge here. I'm not going to listen to you. You're, you're just... A passenger on here, your prisoner. Why should I listen to you? Psh, nah. So he didn't listen. And even though Paul knew this was a bad time, he trusted God because he knew he could. Now at first they got in the boat and they started sailing along. Can you pretend you're in the boat? Hold the sail. Oh, it's going to swing around. Look out. Oh, the waves are a little bumpy today. Can you do that? Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Have you ever gotten in a boat and gone like that? Have you ever gotten sick when you were in a boat? Ooh, I have. It's not fun. Well, here they were. They were traveling right along, sailing on the sea. And at first, like I said, it went pretty well. But then 
a storm came up. Have you ever been in a thunderstorm? Lightning and thunder and big clouds and wind and rain. It can be scary, can't it? Ooh, and especially, can you imagine you're out in the middle of a sea or an ocean and now the wind isn't working? It's just going to rip your sail because it's so strong. And the big storm kept beating on their boat. I bet the men were afraid. I think I would be. Oh, look at them. The ship is just getting tossed. The sail is getting ripped. This is a bad storm. They thought, oh, what are we going to do? They lost control of the boat. One day went by. Two days went by. It continued to storm. The sun never came out. Big black clouds, big raindrops and rain pouring on them. The wind, the rain. Oh, it was scary. Three days went by and they started thinking, we're going to die. They started taking everything they could that was in the boat that they felt like they didn't need and started just tossing it. Can you pick up a big box pretending? Pick up the big box. Oh, be careful. The waves are tossing you and throw it. Oh, there it goes out into the water. Oh, they thought we'll lighten the ship and it'll help. The heavy things are gone, but it didn't help. The waves tossed the ship still, and the crew, the people in charge of making the boat go, they realized there was very little they could do. They probably were not going to survive. Would Paul make it to Rome? Could he trust God? Did Jesus mean it when he told him, you're going to go? What do you think? This is a bad storm. It's been days and the storm still hasn't stopped. The storm isn't going to stop for many more days. What do you think the sailors are going to do? Is Paul going to be safe? What about the people who can't swim? What is going to happen to the sailing vessel and the people on board? Oh, this is scary, but you know what? You'll have to come back next week and find out. So, oh my goodness, it's going to be a whole week before we can um, see what happens with Paul. But you know what? The storm lasted more than a whole week. So every day when, when you think about it, think about Paul is in this boat for all these days. Can he trust can he do it? Is God trustworthy? Oh, let's go back. Let's say our word up. Trust God. He keeps his promises. Yes, he can be trusted. But would Paul be able to trust him? Would he be able to rely on what God said and really know that he would be okay? This was a scary situation. Paul is in trouble. He's been in prison all those years. And can you imagine? He's probably wishing he was back in the jail. I mean, rather than being on this terrible storm in this terrible boat. Oh, what is going to happen? You come back next week to Storytime with Miss Jana, and we'll get um, through the storm and find out who survives, what survives, and what happens with Paul next. I hope that uh, you will be back with me next week and be able to do that. Let's pray together, and then um, I want to talk to you about soldiers, okay? Father God, thank you for the boys and girls who are listening today. Thank you for your Bible that tells us these things are true. Thank you that we can trust you. Your promises never get broken. Sometimes we as people have to break our promises or promises get broken um, that are made to us. But you don't do that. Thank you, Lord, that we can depend on you. Father, if there's just one boy 
or just one girl who has never completely trusted in you and believed on you and told you that he knows he's a sinner and you, he knows that he wants to be in your family. He wants to receive that gift of the um, punishment for our sins. God, I pray that today would be the day they would believe and know that they are accepted into your family. It can be received by you today. Thank you, Father, for allowing us to talk about this today and to have the freedom to be able to uh, tell about you without getting arrested like Paul did. We thank you, Father, for being able to live where we are and being able to share your words. Father, help us now as we finish up with the armor of God. We love you, we thank you, and we, we know that your promises are true. Amen. Okay, we have been talking about the armor of God. Remember, it's a picture. It's not real armor, but it talks about the armor that soldiers wore. And Jesus tells us that we can put this armor on so that we can be protected as we go through the Christian life. Now, maybe you remember, and if you do, let's go through the parts of armor that we've learned. Do you remember the first one? It's the one that everything else gets connected to. It's the, what is it? Can you say it out loud if you know? It's a belt. It's the belt of truth, the belt of truth. Let's put our belt on. We can know that God's word is truth. And then the next thing we learned that the soldier would put on is a breastplate. This is something that would protect his chest. Remember, it's kind of heavy and you have to lift it up and put it over your head and it goes onto your shoulders and your chest, it protects your vital organs and your, and your heart if you were a soldier. And it's the breastplate of righteousness. Remember, we can put on Jesus' righteousness. It's not about us. It's about Jesus giving us his rightness before God. So putting on our breastplate of righteousness, I can have the rightness of Jesus. Then we learned about getting the feet covered all the way up, the shoes of the gospel of peace. When we accept Jesus to be the savior of our sins, we are given peace with God. And because we have peace with God, we can have peace with others. So the soldier's shoes, are you putting them on? The shoes, put one on, of the gospel of peace. Put the other one on, good. So we've gotten our soldier a little bit ready to go, but now we need a little more protection. The next protection is going to tell us about faith. Do you remember that word faith? Maybe you've heard that word faith before. Uh, faith is what? Do you know? Faith is when you trust in something. Like when I came and sat down on this stool, I didn't turn it over and read who made it. I didn't inspect the legs. I trusted that I could sit on it and it would hold me. That's trusting. And so when we trust in God <clears throat> and what he says, that's faith. Faith is knowing God can be trusted no matter what. It's so important that faith is um, shown in this picture of the armor of God. Let's look at what it is. What, what we talk about for faith is a shield. Have you ever been able to use a shield? I remember seeing Joy in a video and she had the Captain America shield. So you understand what a shield is. The shield is to protect. So our faith in God and our faith in his word, the Bible, tells us and shows us that we can be protected. We can be protected from lies. 
Maybe somebody tells a lie about you and you know it's not true. You can be protected. God will still give you um, his faith. We can wear his righteousness. Now we have his faith. Maybe you've heard things said about you that are bad. Maybe it's made you think that you're really not worth anything. You're just a little kid and nobody cares. That's not what God says. God says, I created you special the way you are, and I love you very much. God made you. You are valuable. You are worth everything to God, and he cares about you, and he loves you so much that he let his own son come to earth to be able to suffer and die because he loves you you. You are valuable and important to God. God loves you with a love that will never end. Remember we read that verse in Psalm 118? The steadfast love of the, of the Lord endures forever. It goes on and on and on. It never ever stops. So you can choose to believe that. You can choose to have faith in God no matter what. Paul was choosing to have faith that he was going to make it to Rome. No matter what, even a big storm could not shake him um, being uh, faithful to God. How do we make ourselves feel that faith and have that faith kind of grow in us so we can be strong and trust? Well, one way to start getting stronger in your faith is to read God's words to you. Read the Bible. It tells you what God wants you to know. And you can pray. You're talking to him, telling him the things that you need, maybe just praising him and thanking him. As you do that, you're gonna see, oh, I really can trust God. This really is true. It's going to shield you like the shield of the soldiers. So we call this the shield of faith. All right, we're going to put it on. I'm going to show you a picture. Here is the soldier with his shield of faith. We can have faith in God. I want you to pretend like you're holding your shield out. You've picked it up. You've got your hand through the back of it and you're holding it in front of you. Look how long and big that shield is. It really would protect the soldier, wouldn't it? It, it protects a lot of his body that's not yet protected. So hold your shield out and say, I can have faith in God. Let's say it together. I can have faith in God. And why can we have faith in him? Well, it's the same as our word up we've been learning. We can have faith because we can trust God. He keeps his promises. We hold out our shield of faith and trust God. Now we've gotten our soldier pretty well dressed. I wonder what the next piece will be. What piece do you think the soldier is going to put on next? I want you to be thinking about that shield while you go through your days until I see you again. Be thinking about how can I have faith in God? trusting God because he keeps his promises. It's been wonderful to talk to you today. I hope that you've enjoyed it as much as I have. I want to play, can't talk today. I want to play the verse song one more time so that you'll remember. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. All right, I'm going to play this song for you, and I'm going to say goodbye, and I will see you next week when the song ends. We're all finished, and I'll see you next week for story time with Miss Jonna. Trust God. He keeps his promises. Jesus loves kids, and so do I. Bye-bye. Have a wonderful day.